All right, what's going on guys? Coach here at the Lions Den, and in this video, we're just gonna go over some quick training footage, but more importantly, I wanna talk about uh, the number one mistake I see advanced lifters making. It's probably not what you think, so we'll dive into it in a second, but I'm gonna start warming up uh, with my American Camber Bar, which is by far one of my favorite specialty bars. And today I'm actually gonna flip it upside down, so uh, it's gonna kind of be almost mimicking like a, a block or a board uh, bench press. So we're really gonna hammer those triceps. My lockout is around like 90 to 95% uh, due to the bicep tear recovery. So I can't lock it out completely, uh, but this is just a variation that I'm gonna throw in as my second, uh, typically like a, a pushing day. So let's get to it. All right, so these last several weeks have been just kind of playing around with different movements. Uh, however, next uh, Monday, I'm actually starting more of a structured program. Uh, so I'm excited to get into that. You know, I've been writing a lot of things down, things I need to work on, how I want to structure everything, movement-wise, rep sets, etc. So I'll take you guys through that whole process. Uh, but this week, kind of just having some fun. And uh, I'm going to do probably three sets of about uh, 15 to 20 reps. Reason being is because I can't go very heavy. So if I can't push heavy weight, I'm just gonna stick with some higher volume, get blood flow to the muscles, you know, uh, just kind of work around the bicep. Coach Tanya is gonna be doing sets of five. Uh, so if I wasn't doing this, I was gonna start my compound lift with lower volume, a little bit higher intensity, quote unquote, kind of like that, that power building. Uh, where my, my compound lifts will be able to execute heavier, and then my accessory stuff I'll just pump a little bit more volume to. So, uh, you know, we'll go back and forth with footage of showing her working first in sets of five, and then me just doing heavy volume, just getting uh, blood flow as best I can. All right, guys, so I'm um, super pumped. Um, we're gonna actually be starting a new program block um, this coming Monday. It's gonna be um, like a 12 week focus. Um, kind of gonna go back a little bit more into some of the strength movements. We've been doing a ton of like bodybuilding. Um, so I'm super excited about that. Kind of focusing a little bit more on strength and I'm gonna try to cut around seven more pounds to get to my final goal. See where this 12 weeks takes us and then kind of head into probably a bigger strength block over the winter. All right, so you heard Coach Tiny's goals. Uh, my goals are just to just to get back into it. Uh, but I am excited to start getting some strength training back you know, into the programming as soon as I can. And I'm just trying to prep my mind and my body for what's to come by adding the compound lift slowly back in. Uh, the other thing is we've been doing a push-pull leg twice a week for a long time. And I think we kind of hit that limit mentally and physically that we need to change it up, you know? So I think a lot of people change things up too quickly um, or if they do the same thing for way too long. So you have to find that, that rate in between. So for us moving forward, we're gonna train, uh, for me personally, four days a week. She's gonna do five, uh, but I'm gonna do an upper lower rest, upper lower, okay? The reason I chose four days a week is during those sessions, I'll probably take uh, you know an hour and a half I can really focus, put in a good amount of work, uh, and then also I have three days to rest, recover, work on the business, whatever. I noticed when I was doing you know, five, six days a week of training, one, I was just kind of, my fatigue levels were pretty high, and by the time I was done, it kind of bled over into other things in my life, like working on the business and stuff like that. So for me, four days is perfect. Uh, for her, you know, she just mentally does better with uh, about five days, and then she, if she could, she would do seven days, but I gotta hold her back. Right, because I understand her body and fatigue and how that is all influenced with her. So I know even though I'm holding her back, I'm gonna give her a little bit more time to recover and we can push her harder towards her goals um, during those days that we're working. So that's kind of what we're doing moving forward. She's gonna hit this 120 for a set of five. Uh, and then I'm gonna talk about the, the big tip that advanced lifters make. about these bars you have different grip options right so the closer you get the harder it becomes and with these uh, 
it's it's also like harder with stability wise the closer you get in you guys notice that like when you're coming in like matching his head yeah um, the first time I, I was trying to go for PRs on this the, the main issue I had was just not being used to like the bar wobbling forward and backwards uh, so it just adds a different dynamic to the training and uh, just a variation that's fun to throw in there. All right, so the reason you guys click the video, we're gonna talk about the number one mistake advanced lifters make. Hey, you've been training for a long time. You know, I myself am a considered an advanced lifter. Uh, you've been in this journey for some time. The biggest mistake that I see advanced lifters make, and myself, okay, is that they don't have fun, right? Fun is like probably one of the reasons you guys got into this, right? It made you feel good, you enjoyed it. But the longer you do something, right, the more monotonous it becomes that kind of concept of fun, or maybe you start picking up some goals or some competitions that at first seem fun, and then as you kind of climb higher and higher and higher, uh, you start to wonder like, why am I doing this? Maybe it's not as fulfilling anymore. Uh, but for something that myself that has really helped me kind of get that back is remembering to incorporate fun into my training, okay? If you're gonna be doing this for the long haul, you don't wanna be doing something that you're unhappy with or you're miserable with, right? So we wanna make sure that adherence, right, which is like the number one base of just kind of like the strength training pyramid uh, is that we got to keep having fun with what we're doing all right and there's ways to do that which i'll talk about uh in a second because i gotta hit some incline dumbbell flies but if you guys are feeling like you've been training for a long time you're stuck in that rut and you don't really know what's going on maybe you just need to throw in a little bit a splash or some flavor of fun in your training and that'll kind of you know spark your passion again uh for lifting Titan has the best quality equipment on the market. I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> buy once, cry once, huh? What? Who says that? Oh, yeah. I want to buy a million tires from Titan. I'm just such a, a loyal customer, right? Just keep ranking up those Titan points. Yeah. <sighs> go back. All right, so a uh, key tip on how to make training fun. Uh, the first one that comes to mind is just environment, okay? Where you train plays a huge factor, and also who you train with. So, you know, finding a training facility, a gym, wherever you're at, that has good energy, good vibes, you know, little things like music or whatever um, that, you know, brings joy and happiness to you, you know, plays a role in having fun. The other thing is who you train with, right? If you don't train with anybody, maybe consider getting a training partner uh, because training by yourself has its pros, has its cons, but sometimes just having a, a good human interaction with somebody you enjoy can enhance the experience. So uh, at the same time, if you are training with people, you know, what are their attitudes like? Are they bringing you up or pulling you down? Are they really not that fun, kind of boring? You know, so just some things to consider and think about. Neither is really wrong or right. That's the first thing that came to my mind because I feel like uh, here at the den we do have a really good culture uh, and environment and we have a lot of awesome people that you know we that bring out the fun for when we are training you know sometimes you're having a bad day uh, but you see someone at the gym it kind of makes you crack a laugh or a giggle and it cheers you up a little bit and makes it a better session i need to coach tanya to say the second tip but she's not here <laughs> all right so for me um a way to keep training fun is variety so you're not gonna find me in here doing the same program, powerlifting, 12 months out of the year. For me, that just doesn't work. I like a little bit more variety that keeps it fun for me, uh, changing things up and um, trying not to take it too seriously, but at the same time, setting goals and trying to crush them. So I was saying to Matt, you know, it's, it's a little bit frustrating for me, I'm not gonna lie, because uh, these weights are really light. I, I could keep cranking these out. Uh, however, it wouldn't be smart to either go to that, or it wouldn't make much sense to go that high in volume. Uh, and it doesn't make much sense to really increase the weight with where I'm at recovery-wise. Uh, but at the end of the day, I have to keep reminding myself, you know, it's better than nothing, okay? I'm getting a lot of blood flow to the muscle, uh, which is gonna help the healing process. So if you're injured or you've been through an injury, I'm kinda at that point where it's like, Okay, it's getting a little bit old, but it's just part of the process, you know? And at the end of the day, I got 50 pound dumbbells in my hands when I could have nothing. So that's just the mindset I'm having, but there are moments uh, briefly where I get a little frustrated uh, and I'm excited and eager to start pushing again and get back to where I was, you know? I, I was pushing some pretty heavy numbers at one point and uh, I just feel like the last year of my training uh, just kind of 
had some aches and pains, you know, it, was, it wasn't where I wanted it to be. Um, but happened for a reason, I, I learned a lot, and uh, now I'm gonna come back even smarter. not to because I just feel cable flies way more but the downside isn't only really working my left pack that's true dedication to the cable fly we could grow two pecs but I just want to grow one and it is burning wow Woo! I don't know I, I gotta do those every day and still get growth that was just the way my body responds to them for some reason dumbbell is not the same not the same. Krishanya doesn't like these at all. We're very opposite in that regard. But, uh, I think I'm doing all right. Actually, it's a pretty weak chest. It's a pretty weak chest. There we go. Oh, yeah. So, another tip that could potentially be fun is if you're someone who trains uh, and you don't really have a specific goal, or maybe you haven't competed, right? The flip side for people like be all time is if you haven't, is to go sign up for something and compete. Right? If you're just training and you're in the gym all the time and you have these arbitrary goals, which are great, but maybe just gets a little stale or gets kind of old, if you sign up for something that's out of your comfort zone, it may spark some interest uh, even more so. You may be having more fun. Uh, so it's just something to think about, right? Guys, I know a lot of you guys maybe are timid to compete or haven't competed, and I think there's a ton of value in competing, and also it's a ton of fun. Like really, like when you show up, if you're new to anything really, you have a blast, especially in strength sports. Uh, especially in strongman, right? We have a lot of novice lifters who get into strongman. And the number one thing they always say, and it's like the first thing they say is, that was so much fun. So, consider signing up for a competition if you haven't. Uh, that can spark more interest in your training and give you a great time. I'm really skeptical of the music playing in the gym if it's copyrighted or not, but this song just came on this playlist and it's the intro to my podcast, so I know it's not copyrighted, which gives me some pain. Gives me some pain. All right, guys, so you have it. You guys saw some of our training here. Like I said, we're doing our second push day, having fun before we start the new program, uh, just playing some different movements, and that's it. And we also covered uh, the big mistake that advanced athlete makes, which is just to have fun with your training, guys. We gave you some tips on how you can do that. If you have any extra tips, put them down in the comment section. We always like your feedback. Uh, but that's all for the video. And if you want to support us, go over to stashrank.net. We have tons of programs, uh, lift specific programs, all the way to just general strength and conditioning or more specialized stuff. Uh, we also have our Facebook group, The Iron Lions. Type it in the Facebook search bar. It is a free uh, strength and conditioning community. We put form checks, tips, tricks, updates, all the good stuff. Join the group, 100% free, check it out. Uh, we also have our Patreon account, okay, so pa uh, Patreon slash Zap Strength. There's different tiers from $1 to whatever you wanna pay. Basically, it gives you a ton of exclusive perks if you are a member of the Patreon. Uh, we really appreciate your support. It helps us create the highest quality content and it also uh, funds our projects that we're doing, so it allows us to increase that quality of content. Uh, so check those out. Uh, we also have Becoming Lion Podcast. Season three has dropped. It is phenomenal. We have the everyday person just getting through life with inspirational stories to top tier uh, special forces people in the military, to uh, top athletes, and just people that are just extraordinary for their stories that they share. So it's for anybody. Go check it out. Becoming Lion Podcast available on iTunes and Spotify. As always, guys, stay a lean meat strength machine. And I'll catch you next time. Peace.